The next talent is Dr. Yuto Shimamura from the Digestive Disease Center of the Showa University, Koto Toyoshi Hospital in Tokyo, and uh, he will present his project on endoscopic pressure study integrated system, Epsis. Hi, today I'd like to introduce a novel diagnostic tool for GERD. This tool named Endoscopic Pressure Integrated System, IPSIS, can be easily added to routine endoscopy for diagnosis of acid reflux. Can we observe uh, LES uh, during endoscopy? The answer is yes. But LES can only be observed in retroflex view and cannot be observed in forward view. These are schematic drawings showing the LES function uh, functioning as a one-way valve that can be observed. As you can see here, LES can be identified endoscopically in retroflex view as scope holding sign. With sufficient insufflation in the stomach, the activation of LES can be visualized. This could also be seen during high resolution manometry, uh, showing that scope holding sign likely corresponds to LES. What we hypothesize from this is that when the scope holding sign is present, the patient has normal function of LES. Whereas when the scope holding sign is absent along with GERD symptoms, the patient may have impaired function of LES. By focusing on this, we have developed a new diagnostic tool for GERD. Ipsis was developed to monitor intergastric pressure by continuous insufflation of CO2 during gastroscopy. It is a simple and safe tool that requires only CO2 insufflation for a short period of time. Here's the video showing how Ipsis works. This tube that we connect to the scope is the water supply tube used for endoscopic irrigation. The other end of the tube is connected to the internal pressure measuring device. As seen here, the endoscopist directly connects the tube to this scope channel. The scope is retroflexed and stabilized in upper lesser coverage of the stomach. Once stabilized, CO2 is continuously insufflated. This green line shows continuous waveform of intragastric pressure while insufflating. In this case, increase in intergastric pressure is seen, showing that this patient has tight valve mechanism with normal LES function. This is another case. There is no increase in intergastric pressure, even continuous insufflation, showing flat waveform pattern. The pressure is continuously released with slow belching. This shows that LES is likely impaired. During IPSIS, two parameters can be easily assessed, waveform pattern and maximum intergastric pressure. The maximum intergastric pressure is the point when the belting occurs with insufflation. Our hypothesis that is that normal patients have uphill pattern with high intergastric pressure, whereas GERD patients have flat pattern with low intergastric pressure. We performed a pilot study to evaluate its diagnostic ability by assessing its association with 24-hour pH study. As shown in previous slide, waveform pattern and maximum intergastric pressure were measured. We defined Ipsis GERD positive when both flat pattern and low intergastric pressure were observed. Multivariate analysis showed that Ipsis has high diagnostic ability. In addition, this even applied to NERD patients, which showed high AUC in this diagnostic model. This is another study showing that association between Ipsis parameters and erosive esophagitis, as well as Barrett's esophagus. It showed flat pattern and low maximum intergastric pressure in cases of erosive esophagitis and Barrett's esophagus. This result implied that Ipsis reflects LES function. To improve the diagnostic ability, we further characterized the waveform, basal intergastric pressure, maximum intergastric pressure, pressure difference in elevation, and pressure gradient of the waveform were assessed. 57 patients who underwent both Ipsis and 24-hour pH study were included. Pressure difference and gradient both showed high diagnostic ability of AUC over 0.8. Both revealed very high sensitivity over 90%. This shows that these parameters would be helpful in selecting patients who should undergo 24-hour pH study. In conclusions, IPSIS can be easily added to routine endoscopy for diagnostic purposes in GERD and has potential to be used for patient stratification. We are currently undergoing multi-center prospective study, and we hope to share the results in your future. Thank you. Thank you, Yuto. You open up a new field of endoscopy. Um, my question is to you, the system looks uh, very uh, simple, but uh, what are potential sources of errors for false positive or false negative results? 
but I could not hear. Can you say that again? Um, what are sources of potential errors for false positive or false negative uh, results? Is the system very weak also when you use it, or um, how is this? No, it's not weak at all. Uh, I think we can use this in a clinical setting. Uh, whenever we do screening endoscopy, uh, we could just uh, connect the water supply tube and then measure the intragastric pressure while insufflating. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.